All right, thank you for the introduction, Dr. Caldwell. Uh, hello all, I'm Peter Theriot, and this is my presentation on anatomy educators' ethical views on the recreation of human tissue via 3D printing technology. Before I begin, I would like to take a quick moment to acknowledge all of the help I have received in creating the study. Dr. Loman Monfiglio, my chair, Dr. Goldberg, my mentor, and Dr. John Caldwell, my third, my third chair member, the team at CUN works for the creation of the 3D prints in my study, and everyone else that has played a part in assisting me throughout the years. Thank you very much. Uh, Cadaver-based learning is the gold standard for learning, for teaching and learning human anatomy. However, contact hours and labs have decreased, and due to this, alternative methods have emerged to meet curriculum requirements. Two of those are plastination and 3D printing. Plastination and 3D printed recreations produce a tangible three-dimensional product directly from cadaver material that students can take a multi-sensory approach with to learning anatomy. Plastination has continued to undergo ethical scrutiny by not only the health professional community, but also the general public and bioethicists. In 2004, before the first American display of plastinated cadavers from Von Hagen's Body Worlds was presented to the public, the California Science Center created an ethics advisory committee composed of religious, medical, and bioethics leaders in the greater Los Angeles community. This committee's ethical concerns revolved around obtaining proper consent from donors, respect for the donors, proper considerations for children, and that the public should be properly acclimated before seeing full plastinated donors. The overall opinion from this committee found that the exhibit has considerable educational value and is appropriate. Furthermore, the plastinates are displayed in the context of science, health, and medical education and create an atmosphere of respect. Surveys from the public that pre, post, and one year after the exhibit were conducted that confirmed the exhibit was positive, positively received, memorable, and highly educational. While in 2008, the American Association of Anatomists officially supported Body Worlds if informed consent had been recorded. An updated ethics review from the California Science Center was done again in 2017, which confirmed the previous committee's findings. In a 2018 study focused on the use and perception, perceptions of plastination among medical and anatomy educators in the United States, 14% of respondents raised ethical concerns raised by health specialists that dealt with acquisition, disposal, public display of human remains, and profitability. 3D printing has not had the same ethical scrutiny that plastination has seen up until the present. This may be due in part to the fact that 3D printing is a relatively new approach to anatomical education as compared to plastination, which has been around since 1978. With a wide array, with a wide array of cultural and religious perspectives across the world, efforts have been made to keep the process of body donation for education purposes as respectful as possible in the use of the physical cadaver. While the International Federation of Association of Anatomists, IFAA, has made a strong effort to create common principles of ethics on the use of body donation, their recommendations fall in line with the traditional use in the dissection room and only make a passing reference to the, to the area of images or artifacts from cadavers being used in public areas. What the current principles from IFAA do not specifically address is what level of respect to the 3D printed copies of cadaver material garner. Therefore, the aim of this study is to determine what ethical guidelines anatomy educators find most critical in the recreation of human tissue via 3D printing for the purpose of training future health professionals. In order to conduct this survey, a short informational video was created that addressed the pros and cons and current ethical discussions regarding plastination and 3D printing. This table here in the middle summarizes the information and some of the photos that were presented in this video. Post video, an optional 23 question survey was then given addressing a multitude of ethical topics. Qualtrics survey software was used to collect the quantitative and qualitative data from the survey participants. Data from the five point Likert scale questions was input into Microsoft Excel and double checked for accuracy. The five point Likert scale data was examined using non-parametric chi-squared analysis Likert scale scores were ranked from either, from either one equals definitely yes to five equals definitely no, or one equals extremely appropriate to five equals extremely inappropriate. Questions that did not have skewed data based on the critical value of 9.488 were further anal analyzed with the Kruskal-Wallis test and demographic information was used to sort through the possible differences in ethical perception. Jamovi was used to calculate the Kruskal-Wallis tests mean standard deviation and the chrome box alpha of 0.814 indicating an acceptable level of internal consistency. Survey participants were asked a series of questions on donor information requirements, consent standards, and anonymity. 
A large portion of respondents believe that consent forms should include information on both the process of plastination and 3D printing. Participants also overwhelmingly chose definitely yes or probably yes to including direct opt-out clauses and consent forms for plastination and 3D printing. On the subject of retaining anonymity through the process of either plastination or 3D printing, respondents were again in almost full agreement that this is an either extremely important or very important process to maintain for donors. Chi-squared analysis shows a significant skew toward agreement for each of these questions, except it does not appear that there's a significant disagreement in the use of unclaimed bodies for 3D printing, indicated here in figure one. Uh, further analysis of this question regarding the use of unclaimed bodies was done using the Kruska Wallace test and shows that gender is the significant factor in determining whether or not it, it is acceptable to use unclaimed bodies for 3D printing. Survey participants were asked a series of questions regarding accessibility and ownership of donor data for 3D printing purposes. When proper informed consent is given by the donor, respondents overwhelmingly agree that 3D printed copies fall into the category of data associated with the body. Respondents also largely agree that human tissue data collected with the purpose of being used for 3D printing is under sole possession of the university or body donation company the donor gave original consent to. While shared database for 3D printing is not overwhelmingly agreed upon, there is significant enough skew in the data to support one between universities. Respondents do not appear to believe that a limit should be imposed on the number of times data could be used to make a 3D print. When allowing donor data sets to be available to the public, there is no significant skew in the data to suggest an overall opinion, indicated here in figure two. Uh, Kruska Wallace tests run independently on age, gender, and teaching experience also do not find any significant differences. Uh, this data suggests a normal distribution of results regarding the general public's access to donor data sets. In this section, survey participants answered questions focused on respect, disposal, use in the classroom, and international guidelines. A majority of respondents found that when a 3D printed part of the body is used in class, that it should garner the same amount of respect as a plastinated or cadaveric specimen, and that instructors should also have the class recognize the contribution made by the donor when handling 3D printed recreations. Modification of the original structure provided for 3D printing was also seen as acceptable by the majority of respondents. While this section of questions does address whether or not all parts of the body are fair use for 3D printed recreations. This will be further addressed in the, further, in the free response results section. A large amount of the respondents also found that current IFAA guidelines should directly address the issue of 3D printing cadaver material. For creating a standard procedure to respectfully dispose of 3D printed material after use, respondents appear to have a normal distribution of responses indicated over here. Qualitative data was also collected using Qualtrics survey software. Data was split into two categories, a pro table and a con table, and then split into further subcategories seen here on the left and here on the left as well. This table here shows answers for unacceptable parts of the body to recreate. Uh, we had two main categories here, face and genitalia from uh, seven respondents. And this table shows that range of age appropriateness to introduce the 3D prints into the classroom. Uh, this section of responses highlights that better informed consent is needed for donors and donor forms should include opt-in or opt-out sections for both 3D printing and plastination. Anonymity through the donation process should be continually upheld and unclaimed bodies should probably not be used in 3D printing. Uh, this section reasons that donors who properly consent to the use of their bodies for 3D printing should remain sole property of the university body donation program they gave original consent to. However, it appears that anatomy educators are willing to allow the public to have access to these data sets, which can be seen as contradictory in nature to a donor's original consent for body donation. There also does not seem to be an issue with reusing the same cadaver data sets indefinitely if the opportunity presents itself. Uh, this su su section supports the view that educationally 3D printed recreation should garner a similar, similar level of respect in the classroom as the cadavers themselves, but do not require additional regulations when it comes to the disposal of these recreations. However, in good faith, the IFAA should consider making adjustments to current good practice body donation guidelines. To date, there are few, if any, study, there are few, if any studies that have been done to assess ethical implications in using 3D printed recreations from cadavers. This initial survey could serve as the beginning of empirical evidence gathering 
required to help guide ethical discussions and establish best practice guidelines when implementing the use of 3D printed recreations in an educational setting and the creation of better informed consent guidelines for body donor programs. Uh, some limitations I had were uh, larger, I would probably need a larger sample size. I only had about 44 respondents. Um, and then I also think it would help to have general public input as well into this, into the survey as well. Uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, do I have any questions? I have a couple of questions, but first a wonderful job, Peter. I think this is a really important study that you've done uh, and initiated. Um, I think the question that I have is regarding your figure one report on gender is that the gender of the, the donors or the gender of the respondents that you reported? Oh, that's uh, gender of respondents that reported. Gotcha. So did you see statistical differences between the? the uh, yes. So the, uh, when I ran the uh, Kruskal uh, Wallace test for, um, for that specific question, I did have a significant difference in um, responses. Mm -hmm. with, and do uh, you have a little more um, demographic information on your 44 respondents? Are they more in the medical field education or are they in the anatomical services field or? Like, um, I had, it was uh, mostly uh, lecturers, um, okay. lecturers and professors and a few researchers. Um, and then about a third of the uh, respondents were um, um, like upper level master students mm -hmm. that had uh, already had taught a class. Gotcha. Okay, thank you for that clarification. I think certainly adding some more population of these different pockets of individuals will provide a little more richer um, data set, but very well done, very important. I, another question going off of Dr. Lee's is, um, were these all American instructor professors or was it any international respondents? I had two international responses, uh, one from Australia and one from Canada. Um, I would hope for further. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it might be really interesting to work with the AAA to send this out as an international survey among all the AAA mm -hmm. members. I mean, it, yeah. it's, it's, a really, it's a really important study, really nicely done. Sorry, someone's playing music in the parking lot behind me. Yeah, and to the IFAA, as Lisa said. Yeah, I, I think getting some of these organizations behind sending, like expanding the distribution of a survey like this to collect yeah. internationally. And, uh, the Fascination Society as well, I think would be mm -hmm. another one to add to that list. I did reach out to them, but I didn't get a response, so. <laughs> yeah, it does seem though as if you could continue this a little bit more so that you could actually instigate something that the IFAA could actually do, you know, with data. Yeah. I am an instigator, yes. Yes. All right, thank you, Peter. <laughs>